What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about something that is probably my favorite part of raid and that is the, I guess, freedom and uniqueness of builds that you can do on champions, right? Tons of different mastery options, tons of different gearing options. And sometimes when you're playing around with these things, you end up finding something that is actually kind of like a hidden gem. That's way better than what you originally thought was the best build. And if you guys have any other champions that you're interested in seeing, any different builds you think are unique, either drop it down in the comment section below or join Discord, send me a message. I'm very interested in seeing those because sometimes, like I said, sometimes these champions may be just kind of tunnel visioned on this build's the best, but once you get into other things, they actually end up being way better. And this is something that I just really enjoy in Raid. I enjoy these uh, unique builds. I've done a few videos on unique champion builds, unique champion guides, so on and so forth. But to be honest, I haven't done as many as I thought I had, so I would like to do some more, share, the, share them with you guys, because some of them can really change how you progress in the game in general. So before we get too much in the video, I do want to point out one thing that some of you guys may have noticed, may have been wondering what's going on, but my left eye over here, I did have a question about what happened with it. Um, it looks like my right eye, but it actually is my left eye. I got the camera flipped, uh, but basically I went to get LASIK done last week. And my right eye was perfectly fine. Everything happened smoothly, no problems. It feels great right now, just a few days post um, the operation. My left eye, on the other hand, was being a little difficult in the procedure. Basically, they were trying to get a little suction cup to hold my eye still, and it kept breaking suction, so they kept having to redo it over and over and over. And it just, I guess, popped some blood vessels or something. It's actually no big deal whatsoever. It feels perfectly fine. I'm going back uh, today, actually, to get it checked up get everything moved forward, and then hopefully get my left eye finished up with LASIK sooner rather than later. My right eye feels great. See great out of it. Um, and I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. If you've had LASIK done, let me know how it went for you. Let me know what you think about it. Some people have heard very different opinions. Some people say it's absolutely amazing, the best decision of their life. And some people are like, ah, it doesn't, didn't really work for me. So I've heard more of that side from people who had it done, like say 20 years ago, 15 years ago. So uh, let me know what you think. I guess it's a little late for me to ask opinions because uh, I'm already having it done. So anybody who had bad experiences, I guess it's a little too late for me to heed those warnings. But let's talk about the video today, guys, okay? So this is not an eye doctor video. This is a video on champions who are built unique and maybe you can find some big use for them inside your account. So first off is Avenging Skullcrown. Now, with Skullcrown, I did a video on her before talking about Avenging Gear. Avenging Retaliation, both amazing. Basically, those are the counterattack sets. Um, I'm avenging. The difference is that it only activates when you're hit with a crit. It has a higher chance of activating, but you don't get any damage reduction with it. Whereas retaliation gear, whenever you counterattack with retaliation gear, you actually deal 65% of your normal damage. So you do take some reduction in your damage, but you don't have the condition of only counterattacking on crits. So retaliation, you can wear that and have um, reaction gear, reaction accessories on as well. Whereas with Avenging Gear, you don't want to have the reaction accessories because you're not going to proc any of those crits, right? So Skullcrown, I think she's an absolutely amazing champion with that. You guys have probably ran against a Skullcrown in the arena who had counterattack after counterattack and absolutely destroyed your team. She's one of my favorite champions to have in Avenging Gear. Absolutely love her. She's so much fun. Uh, make her really slow. Make her 100% crit rate, the whole nine yards, a ton of attack, ton of crit damage, and she will blast the enemies, whether it's on offense, defense, whatever it is. It's a fun build, if nothing else. I actually have mine built for the arena as well as for um, Faction War. So she works well in both. She's a fun champion to use. I've actually had some good success, especially against like Hegemon teams where she's just going to keep counterattacking over and over and over. Obviously, if she gets decreased attack landed on her, it's not going to be great. Um, but both reaction and avenging can work very, very well if you want to bring not reaction, both retaliation and avenging can work very, very well. If you want to bring reaction gear though, you're going to want to go with retaliation instead of avenging, take that little bit of damage reduction, but get less damage taken to you, I guess. So that's skull crown. First one up. The next one is a champion who I'm sure you guys have seen me talk about before. That is Vrask. And this set, I mentioned that some of these sets are like kind of out of the box thinking, but to be honest, retaliation on Vrask is like, it seems like it's just handcrafted for him, right? So if you're going to have retaliation on him, you're still going to want him to be fast. You're also going to make sure he has a lot of HP and make sure that he has 100% crit because the only time he procs the heal is when he gets a crit landed, right? So if Vrask is wearing retaliation gear, he's going to be having so many heals go off. And honestly, he was a crucial part of my Faction Wars team, still is, still a very important part of my Faction Wars team. I've used him on Irgoth in the Doom Tower. I used him on several Doom Tower bosses because... I mean, you can't beat a counterattack that's healing for 10% of his max HP. Those are some pretty big heals, especially since he has 23,000 
base HP. Vrask is an incredible champion. He's a little bit squishy with 870 base defense, but his good HP makes up for that. And every time he's getting hit, he's going to have a chance to counterattack. If you have him in that retaliation gear, making him such a good part of so many teams, such a good boost to survivability. The next champion is going to be a little bit different, okay? So this is a little bit different approach. This is Renegade Ghostborn. Basically, this goes for any champion who specifically you're using in a Seer team. Um, a lot of people know this, but I do want to share it because I know I've been into a few accounts where people didn't have this. But those champions in your Seer-specific teams, they don't need to do anything extraordinary. Like They don't need to be geared for maximum damage. They don't need super high accuracy. They just need to meet their speed goals. And that's really all, right? Because Ghostborn has an irresistible decreased defense. So if you throw him in a shield set or an immunity set, you're going to get those extra buffs from whichever set it is to help your seer do even more damage. Okay, so it's absolutely incredible. Same thing with like blood shield accessories. Throw that on them if you can. It gives even more buffs for seer to strip and do even more damage. But champions like Ghostborn, Renegade, maybe if you have a lot of Kaimars, Kaimar can make sense. But those champions who you don't need them to hit a crazy hard, you don't need to hit crazy high stat requirements for them, throw them in those immunities, shield sets, um, divine speed, divine offense, divine life, whatever it may be, to get those extra buffs for your seer teams. I'm not, I'm not going to harp on that too much because that is very specific to having seers, but Ghostborn, Renegade, all those great champions for that role specifically. The next champion I want to talk about is Seeker. Okay, So Seeker is one of the champions who I, for a long time, was chasing. I couldn't get him. Finally got him, and I absolutely love him. So he has so many different uses, okay? His most popular is probably in the Bad Eater team, but that's, we're not going to talk about that, okay? Bad Eater is Bad Eater. It is what it is, right? Um, but Seeker, Shield Set and Guardian Set. I absolutely love both of those. So there's kind of two different situations where I would use those. Uh, Shield Set is very good if you're in a Go Second team, specifically that you're going against an enemy who doesn't have a Strip Champion, okay? So if it's just like heavy damage dealers, a Hegemon, um, somebody who's not going to strip that shield off of you. Shield set is absolutely amazing. Stack his HP up. The other option for Seeker is building him in a Guardian set. So if you're using a champion who, if you're going against a team who has strip champions, throw in Seeker in a Guardian set, having Bulwark on him, having um, Selfless Defender is going to help him absorb even more damage. So if I use Seeker against Madame Saris, against Kaimar, against Sathalia, anything like that, I'm throwing him in a Guardian set and getting hopefully a lot more benefits from him, right? Versus a shield set, which is just going to be a remove. It's going to be useless. Now against Hegemons, you can do that though. You can throw him in a shield set against Hedgy teams with Madame Sarah's strips. It's going to be perfectly fine. The next champion is going to be Doom Priest, okay? So Doom Priest, these are kind of two different builds I think are very, very good. It's going to be Relentless, obviously Relentless and Frenzy, okay? So Relentless is going to give him more procs, more cleanses, and more heals. So more procs of that heal and cleanse. Or Frenzy, every time she gets hit, She's going to get turn meter boosted, allowing her to go more frequently, which going more frequently means more heals. Just a great situation overall, right? Um, Relentless and Frenzy, absolutely amazing sets for Doom Priest. Frenzy is a kind of type of gear that, to be honest, a lot of champions don't see a ton of use for. It's one of those sets from Fire Knight that if you get it, you're going to save the decent pieces, but Doom Priest works great in Frenzy set or Relentless gear, okay? Um, the next one is Cantra. Now, I did a video about her a while back, and the gear that I think works so incredibly well on her is frost and frostbite so frostbite and frost sets both those together work so good okay if you only have frostbite sets throw three sets on her um, or frost plus frostbite whatever it is guys but getting those freezes if you pair those freezes with the mastery um harvest despair where she has a chance of placing leech on enemies who get stun sleep freeze um let's see it's right here um, Harvest Despair, Stun, Sleep, Fear, True Fear, Freeze, or Petrification will place Leech, okay? So Cantra has the benefit of if she has five or more debuffs placed on the enemy, if I can actually navigate back to Cantra, we'll look at her passive and talk about it. Um, but Cantra has a benefit, um, has a 75% chance of placing Provoke debuff on one, for one turn on enemies under five or more debuffs at the start of this champion's turn. So if you're able to place that freeze when they attack you, she's also going to place the leech or have a chance of placing the leech. That's two debuffs right there. If you have a champion like Stagnite placing two more on everybody, then her A2 ability doesn't have to do that much of heavy work, right? Like it's going to be pretty easy to get that fifth debuff up. She's going to place the Provoke, giving her even higher chance of getting to attack her again, placing those freeze, and keeping up that cycle of really massive, very, very strong CC, okay? Cantra's an absolutely amazing champion. Uh, I think kind of underrated, underused, underappreciated, but she's an awesome champion. And some pretty cool looking eyes there. I never actually noticed that. I like that like that blue color on her eyes. Um, the next one 
is Ironclad. Now, Ironclad is another orc champion. Orcs have a lot of good champions. Now, this guy, you've probably seen him talked about quite a bit. I've seen a lot of other content creators make videos on him, um, but he's, a, he's an amazing champion. First off, he has the big benefit of getting that damage dealt to everybody when healed with surplus healing. But another thing is just throw him in a stun set. Throw him in a stun set. When he attacks all enemies from that surplus healing, it can proc those stun procs, right? So if you're getting healed over your health, Dealing AOE damage, it doesn't matter how much damage you're dealing. You could literally be hitting for one damage. But if you have a stun set equipped to him, then he's going to have a chance to stun everybody, right? It's going to be a low chance, but it is a chance. You could also do it with taunting set or day set, whatever it is. Day set would probably be my least favorable option, but taunting, higher chance, taunt everybody. Very, very good crowd control for faction wars, for dungeons, whatever it is, wherever you're trying to progress through. If you can have somebody heal him, very good chance to CC everybody, throw that Harvest Despair Mastery on him as well. Everybody's going to be under Leech, and it's going to be very, very good for overall sustainability. The next champion is actually Bystophis. Now, I currently have him geared in this, and this is um, a little bit... It's not going to be amazing, okay? But it is the best option that I had. Basically, Bystophis, I've been using him against um, in the arena for this block active skills and a decreased defense. However, he is Force Affinity, so against Duchesses, he is going to have a problem. Also, this attacks all enemies, so it's not like Madam Saris who just places it. He can get weak hits, okay? Also, Madam's Void Affinity, so she couldn't get weak hits anyways, but he can get weak hits. And these weak hits are going to be against Spirit Affinity Champions, which means Duchesses. Duchesses are going to be his biggest pain, his biggest hard time in the arena, wherever it is. So what I've done is I've thrown an Affinity Breaker set on him. While this chance is small, okay, so first it's got to have the weak hit actually happen, and then 20% chance to change a weak hit into a critical hit. So I just don't want the weak hit to land, because if the weak hit lands, then I can't land that decrease defense plus the block active skills, which the block active skills are so important. So really, this is just my best option to get him to actually apply that block active skills to duchesses in the arena. Now, obviously, I can bring other options, but if you have Bystophis and you're using them in the arena, you've probably had some headaches going against duchesses. So just try to throw an Affinity Breaker on affinity breaker set on him. It's very easy to build him. All you need is speed to an appropriate level and then accuracy to the level to actually apply the debuffs. Sometimes I run him with like Yoshi or Lady Kimmy to boost his accuracy if it's against a very high resistance team. But Affinity Breaker set is one of those sets where honestly I didn't really use it at all. But I think it's got a very legit use on Bystophis and seems to work very well. Um, still, obviously, I still get plenty of weak hits, but it does save me um, enough times to make it worth it. The next champion I want to talk about is Tatura. So Tatura is a champion I don't actually have. Uh, I missed him in the fusion, but I did a video on him a while back talking about Tatura in taunting gear, okay? So Tatura is a high elf. It should be a skinwalker, right? He looks like he'd be a skinwalker champion, but he is a high elf. Um, wait, I do have him? How do I? Oh, yeah, I, I did get him. I pulled him from a shard. Lucky me, right? Um, I did not fuse him but I did pull him from the shard. I kind of wish I fused him and pulled him, so then I would have a dupe working towards my high elf faction wars, uh, my faction guardian, sorry. But Tatura is the champion who, he benefits from people attacking him, right? So when attacked, reflects 30% of the damage this champion receives back to the attacker, which is probably gonna be pretty minuscule. He's gonna have defense. He's not gonna be receiving that much damage, so it's gonna be probably negligible, but also has a 30% chance of placing a freeze debuff on the attacker for one turn. So obviously, if you have a chance of freezing somebody when they attack you, it's like a built-in frostbite or free um, frost set. So it's amazing as it is. But if you're able to provoke them, so have an A3 that attacks all enemies, have him in a taunting set, he's going to have a chance to provoke everybody. Well, each person he hits. So he's going to have benefits of the provoke plus benefits of the actual freeze if it lands. Very good overall CC functionalities. So if you can get him to work out in a taunting set, if you have a good taunting set, to be honest, it's probably not used on very many other champions unless you have Hegemon, which I don't. I wish I did. Maybe I get him this weekend. But taunting set's probably not getting a ton of use. So throw him in a taunting set. If you can make it make sense, if you have good gear, throw him in the taunting set. Tatura is a very, very solid candidate for taunting gear. And especially when taunting gear is not an amazing gear set for most champions as far as a set bonus goes, right? But Tatura is a champion who makes it actually worth keeping some of those pieces. And last but not least, number 10 is going to be Shield Guard. If you've been following the channel for a while, guys, you know that I've talked about Shield Guard a lot. He was my second 60 on my free-to-play account. Absolutely amazing champion. But a lot of times I have this guy in Lifestyle Gear. On my free-to-play account, I have him in Lifestyle Gear. Lifestyle Gear works amazing for a lot of content. But if you can make it make sense, having him in Reflex Gear is so good. I mean, this ability is on a two-turn cooldown. But if he attacks... 
attacks everybody, right? If he lands crits on everybody, he's going to essentially, well, five people, he's going to get a full turn meter boost. If the um, the masteries don't reduce the cooldown of this, the reflex gear can reduce the cooldown of this. Basically, he's going to be raining down battle stance AOE abilities like crazy. And on spiders, this has been so cool to watch. Basically, he does the AOE ability, fills his turn meter. The spiders drop down more. He does AOE ability, fills his turn meter. If he keeps getting this reset, it can snowball and just really just keep doing this A2 ability over and over and over. And honestly, I wish they had more cool champions like Shield Guard, but having him in reflex gear, it's going to need to be good gear. You're going to need to make sure he stays alive. You're going to need to make sure he does good damage still. It's not going to necessarily carry him by no means, but it's a very cool set to watch him just do constant A2, A2, A2. Pair that with the... Um, the mastery that has a chance to reduce the cooldown of the ability if he deals 30 percent more of enemies max hp it's it's hilarious to watch it okay reflex just over and over and over it's pretty neat guys so that is going to wrap it up with those 10 champions who i think have some pretty unique builds unique gearing options you can use for those champions if you guys have any other options any other suggestions definitely share them down below i would be more than happy to check them out maybe feature them in a video down the road test them out a little bit and see if we can find any other hidden gems unearthed some hidden gems, guys. But thank you all very much for watching the video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one.